Hi, this is Ed Gregory for PhotosInColor.com and today I'm going to show you how to create panoramas in Photoshop. Theme tune. Do 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 do. Panoramas. 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 What am I doing? I feel like I'm doing magic. Panoramas. That was really weird. It came from that initial panorama thing that I did, did with my hands. That was odd. I don't think I liked it. Okay, so a panorama essentially is an image which is either very squat and wide or very tall and thin. Essentially, a regular image is say this shape, panorama is wider. Usually for a panorama, you don't crop into panorama, is you take multiple photographs and then you stitch those together. Now, the amazing thing about panorama in Photoshop is you can stitch in any direction. So essentially you could take a set of photos this way and then a set of photos above that and below that, and it's gonna do a whole lot of stitching. So something to point out in this, panoramas can take a lot of Photoshop processing power, so they can take a little bit of time. So remember that when you're doing it, you may have to wait for a moment while it does a lot of that work for you. But trust me, it is worth the wait. So if you want to practice with this panorama, you can download the image at photosincolor.com because this is part of my Photoshop training course where you can just learn everything you need to know to get you started. So let's jump into Photoshop and have a look. Here we are. We've just opened up Photoshop and we're at the very start page essentially where you've got your different images. Now you can open from Lightroom by right clicking on a series of images and saying open, um, create panorama. You can also have images open and you can go file, automate, and then you'll go uh, photo merge. That's where the panorama is. And you click on that and then you've got some options. Now, if we already had say the six images loaded up in Photoshop, we'd go add open files, but we don't have that. So instead we're gonna add them. And all we have to do is make sure it's selected on files and go browse and then select the files that you want. So we're gonna use these four images today up at Red Rock here in Las Vegas. Now, if they're all in one folder, you could just select the folder and it would automatically select all of those. Now, we have a number of options within this and it's important to understand all these things. Essentially, you have um, auto. Now, I would 90% of the time leave it on auto because Photoshop does an amazing job at analyzing the images and figuring it all out. Perspective, that's usually um, if you have taken a traditional panorama, so it's thicker in the middle and narrower on the edges when it builds the image, it will then correct that for you. And then you've got all sorts of other options that do different things. What I would suggest is practice with these. Spherical, that basically pulls out the corners of each one. Um, cylindrical means that if you've taken it with a, uh, a lens which is say a, a really wide angle lens, it's going to be able to lift up different areas and, and make those nice and square. Collage basically pushes them together as if you, you've got a series of photographs on top of each other and then reposition just moves them around but it deletes elements to it. So you've got to be careful of those ones. For me, auto works 90% of the time or perspective for a traditional panorama. Let's leave it on auto today. Now at the bottom here, you've got a few different options. Each one of these that you click basically will take longer for your panorama to be creative. Blend images together. What that means is Photoshop will actually create layer masks for the sections of which the images have overlapped each other. So always leave that on because it's amazing. Vignette means that if your lens has created a vignette and it's struggling to align things because of that, Photoshop can automatically remove that for you. Great to have that done. Geometric distortion, so that's if the image is pretty distorted and wobbly or you've used a lens that has a lot of curve on it, it can correct all of that. And then this last one, now this one is gonna make the processing time a lot longer, but I'm gonna show you what this does. Basically, any areas that are not inside the panorama, maybe you've missed a little section, or there's a little bit above, it's gonna fill that in for you. So essentially, I'm gonna leave all of these selected today, but you're gonna see it's gonna take some time. All I have to do is hit OK. Now what Photoshop is going to do is open those four images, it's then gonna put them into one Photoshop project, and then it's gonna start stitching them together and, and aligning them. What it will then do is it will find out the overlap sections and then delete that overlapped section. And then the next thing it will do, any blank areas which are missed in the image, it will then do a content aware and it will fill all of that area. 
So we're just gonna leave this to do this until it is completely ready. Okay, so there we are, it's completely done and it's created this amazing image. Now, a few things to point out. You can see it's got this layer mask, which it's created here. Now there's a reason for that. That is what it's created using content aware. That was that, that last option. So if I turn off that layer where it's all merged down, what you can see is this is essentially what my image is, okay? I've, this is what Photoshop has created and you can see it's been stitched three times, four different images, but if you zoom in, you can't actually see those stitch marks. It just puts those in so, you, so that you can reference them. And essentially what that is, is these are the areas which were not photographed. Now, I selected the content aware fill, so it did that automatically. If you chose not to do that, you can select the outside like this. You go edit. Oh, and so sorry, if we've, if you haven't got that selected, so this wouldn't be there, let me just show you how you would do it. You would essentially, let me just get rid of this. You would flatten all the layers by selecting them all and you go command option shift E and that would flatten all of those. And then you'd go, um, you'd select the outside area, the magic wand tool, and you'd click on the outside there. There you go, and it's just gonna make those selections for you. You'd literally do this, it would take 30 seconds to do. And then you'd go edit, and you'd go fill, and you'd select content aware and hit okay. And that would do exactly that and fill it in. And you can see it's done a phenomenal job. Now, let me show you a few other things. Maybe you didn't do content aware fill because you don't want to add other things to it, but now you've got this bold effect. Now, there's a few things that you could do here. First of all, you could just literally come into the crop tool up here and you could move this in so you could crop out. You're in crop preview, so you'd, you'd come down here. You'd, but you can see what I'm doing is getting rid of massive amounts of information. So I probably wouldn't do that. Hit escape. Instead, what I'd do with this flattened layer now, I'd go, well, actually, because this file is so huge, I'm going to quickly change my image size of this because it's 23,000 pixels right now. I'm just going to make that 10,000 just for the tutorial purposes. And so that's going to shrink it down for me. It's going to help it out a lot, make it run faster. Voila. So command zero to fill the screen with that. That looks great. What I would do is I'd go filter and I'd go adaptive wide angle. Now inside this, it's already done a great job at having a go at figuring it out. And what I would do is I'd take this tool up here and I'd draw a line along the bottom. And you can see the line is curving itself because it's figuring out where this curve is on the image. And I'd let go and it's gonna straighten the bottom of that. That's done a pretty good job. And you can see, so now I've got a lot more of my image and I can zoom this in so that it completely fills that, like so, and now I can hit okay. So now what would happen, you can see it straightened it. Let's group these other layers and hide them. Selecting them all, command G for group, and then just hide. And now what I can do at this level is now I can crop this in. So let's just do that just so that we can see the different ways of making this happen. Now there's other things that you could do. So you could have used the transform tool. In fact, let me show you how that would happen. You could have it selected, okay? And with this layer selected, you could go in, we're up here and go Command T, and it's gonna select that to transform. And you could use the transform warp tool and essentially you could move it around like so until you got it nice and straight. So that's another kind of good way of doing it. But remember you are manipulating the image quite a lot here and you run the risk of stretching pixels and doing different things. Today I'm actually gonna do this because it's done now, it didn't take me very long. Uh, there we go and we've pretty much got all of that in, hit return. Okay, I would have used the content aware for this. So that essentially is how we make a panorama inside Photoshop. So if that's all you want, then you can stop the video. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of an edit on this and see what we can do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go Command J, duplicate that layer, and I'm gonna go Filter, and I'm actually gonna go Camera Raw. Okay, I'm gonna open this, and it's gonna bring up the image, 
like so, and then I'm just gonna hit auto, see what it does. Okay, it brought everything up quite a lot, I like that. But we're then gonna come into my color references here. Luminance, I'm gonna pull down my blues, so it's gonna really boost those, and I'm gonna lift up my oranges, so it's gonna lighten all of these areas here. The saturation, I wanna boost the saturation of my reds and my greens, actually. So, because it's red rock, I want all of these to pop out. I'm really happy with that. So, with that in mind, in fact, I'm actually gonna go to split toning, and actually my highlights, which is where this is hit, I'm gonna add some reds. So wherever the sun is hitting it, it's now got some red on there. And then in the shadows, because it's the sun is setting, I'm gonna add a little bit of the blue to that just to cool that off. That for me has now really made that come alive. We're gonna hit okay. Let's see, great. So now we've got before and after starting to come alive. Now what I'm gonna do is a few other little clever ideas for this. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take on the, uh, the tone curve, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of red into my highlights. So if you watch, if I add red into the highlights, it's gonna add this really weird color because of what's going on here, and I don't really like it. So instead, what I can do is I can add a little bit of red to the entire image, like so, which I really like, but now I've got it in all of my shadows. So, now what I can do, select the original layer, and I'm gonna go select color range. And inside color range, rather than selecting a color, I'm gonna select the tones and I'm gonna select highlights. Anything white now is gonna become a selection. So let's bring this up here, so I want the sky to have all of that, and then all of these areas here, but these darker areas, I don't want those to be included. So something like that. And now when I hit OK, and now I'm gonna hit Layer Mask, and you can see what it's done there, is it's now only added it to my highlights, which is what I wanted. I'm actually gonna now bring down, bring up my contrast, just a little bit, and I think this is looking great. Now, one thing I want to add is a sun, is a bit of a flare coming across here. So, Command Option Shift E is gonna flatten everything into its own layer at the top. Then I'm gonna go Filter, and I'm gonna go Render, a Lens Flare, and I'm gonna place the Lens Flare where the sun is. And I'm just gonna hit OK. It's done OK, but now it's, it's too hard and I don't love it, but that's OK. Making sure that my background layer is selected, I'm gonna hit Command Delete, and that's gonna basically turn that black. And then if I hit Command F, that reapplies whatever my last effect was. So now it's put that back in. And then all I have to do is turn this mode here to screen. And now it's put it back in place. And now I really like what it's done, but it's still too hard because it's on its own layer. I just go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I can add a really heavy blur onto that like so. And I'm gonna pull down the opacity. Now for me, let's look at the before and the after. So option and click on the bottom layer. That's where we started and this is where we've ended. Now, this isn't everything that I would do and I don't necessarily love it, but it does give a really good example of what you can do. So let's zoom in on this image and let's have a look at this. I think it's looking absolutely stunning. All the details are there and that's what I would do to the image. So, that there is how to create a panorama inside Photoshop. Now, if you like this image, please, and tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Loads more videos coming. If you want to work with my project files and work along with me, head over to Photos in Color. The link is in the description, and you can get this entire Photoshop training course. Anyway, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune. Do -do 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 -do.